Welcome back to Sumster Games, the place to find new strategy games and today we're gonna play Spirit Island, which is a digital board game. It's a very cool game, it's a little... It's not really that it's like super complicated, but it has a lot of rules that I have to explain to you. Just like typically, like board games have a lot of rules, so if you play a digital board game it tends to be a bit more complicated than a typical computer game. But this one's really fun, so let me show it off. You're gonna be playing on the all the easiest difficulties that there are, just so I can explain everything. Our story begins with an island. Long before humans ever knew it, the island was there. It was very small. When the invaders came, only one spirit was able to fight it. They were straightforward in their ways. Okay. Now, first thing you can do is you can pick your map. So you can choose any of these maps. You can also get a bigger map by combining these things, which I think is really cool, but we're not going to be doing that. We're going to stick to this basic map, let's say, and then we can pick our spirit. So each of these spirits have different uh, cards that you can use to fight the enemy. Actually, let me just say what the game is about quickly before we begin. The game is about invaders who come out into the world and they try to build their cities and their town and they kind of don't care about the nature, so they sort of destroy it. And we are a nature spirit who wants to protect the nature and also our people who are called the Hans and we are trying to destroy the invaders. And each of these spirits, we can pick one that we're gonna play, it has different abilities that they can use, like different tactics. We're gonna be playing with the river searches and sunlight. Let me read you about them. On most of Spirit Island, the rivers run high during the rainy season, as one would expect. There's one exception. The lingering remains of an ancient curse keep a high ridge shrouded in ice, and when the sun beats down, it feeds a single river with abundant meltwater. River surges in sunlight is a spirit of rushing water, inundation, and bounty out of season. It gets along well with the Dehan who farm along its banks. They reap the benefit of good harvest and tend to the health of the river in its drier times. Both game. I should also remind you that during August we're doing an experiment when I split my daily uploads between both of my channels. So on Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday I have a video on my second channel and the other days on my main channel. So link in the description for both. Make sure you subscribe. And now let's begin. Alright, so during the first phase the, ex the invaders will explore and they will send out their explorers out into the world they're moving into the jungle Ooh, that's actually starting rather okay this is not the best for us but that's okay so the first time is a little bit different than the rest but afterwards the way this works is that each of these moves forward and they start off by exploring they explore the jungle and then the jungle symbol move to the left Next thing what they'll do next time they'll explore, they will build in the jungle. The rules for building are this. If there are more towns in the land than cities, they will build a city. Otherwise they'll build a town. So here they'll build a town, here they will build a city. Cities are, this is a city. Cities are quite problematic because you can't uh, move them away. You can move cities and explorers, uh, towns and explorers away, but not cities. So afterwards, this build from this build phase upon the next sort of iteration of turns, this will move into the ravage area and they will do damage. They do damage equal to their HP. An explorer has one HP, a town has two HP, a city has three HP, and they do a damage both to the land and to all the dehans. These yellow things are my dehans. Each dehan has HP of two. If they do more than two damage to the land, we will gain Blight, which is this, which will take away our HP. If our HP gets to zero, we're dead. Also, there's a limited amount of turns during which we can play. If you run out of turns, we also game over. How do we win? We need to fulfill our victory conditions, which is this thing down here. We need to destroy all explorers, all towns and our cities. We can change our victory condition by putting fear in the hearts of the explorers or invaders. If we make them terrified enough times, we will increase the terror level and if you increase the terror level, it will be easier for you to win. Okay, so first thing we can do is we can pick our growth, so we can either so we can do a couple things. At the moment, we're just going to add our presence. So we're going to pick add presence and we're going to put one presence here. Oh, actually, we can. So we're going to put one presence here next to the blight and the second one down here next to this explorer. What's really important is that if they ravage your land, 
uh, and you have a presence there, the presence will be destroyed. Like if they put a blight in there and you have a presence, they will get destroyed. Now we, now we can pick our cards. We can play up to two cards maximum and we have two energy that we can use up. Any card that has a red frame can be used before they go. So that means before they do their build phase, we can play these cards. Any blue can be only played after they do their build and ravage phase. In this case, there's no ravage phase just yet, but they would be soon. So we're going to start by using the flesh floods, which allow us to do one damage. This will allow us to kill this explorer, which is important because he won't be able to build here, which is really good for us. Secondly, we're going to take the river's bounty to get more to hands. And we can, when you're picking cards, you should be also looking at the elements because if you get the right elements, which in our case is one yellow and two blue, you will be able to play a specific power of your spirit, which is this massive flooding, which allows us to push one town or explore away. So we're going to finish playing cards. And now we can play our fast cards. We're going to play the flash floods over here to kill that explorer. Now they will build. They will only build here. Unfortunately, they will still build a city. We couldn't stop it. But at least we didn't let them build anything over here. And now they're going to explore a new area. They will explore the sandlands. So they put a one thing here and a one thing there. That's fine. Not too terrible. Now we can use our slow things. So next turn what they're going to be doing is they're going to be the ravaging the jungle. So they've got nobody here so that doesn't matter but they do have people here. So we want to be looking at how are we going to handle this. We got a couple of options. We can first of all move the hands here and we can move one town away. So if we move one town away, they will have a total damage of four. So if we were to put two the hands there, uh, this river's bounty gives us a bonus. If we can move two the hands there, they will add one the hands. So we're going to have three the hands there total. So they will do four damage, but we will be able to do two damage back. Which is actually not enough to destroy the city. But maybe we could use some sort of an attacking card next turn? Not ideal. Oh, it doesn't matter whether they do 2 or damage or 4 damage to a land, you'll just get 1 blight anyway. So alternatively, we could try to focus on destroying some of these so that make them stop from building in these sandlands and just be like, we're just going to take the damage in the jungle. And I think... I think I might do that. We're going to push this explorer away into the... We're going to actually put him here into the jungle because one explorer only does one damage. So we don't much care for... He's not going to give us any blight and our Dehounds will be able to kill them. And then we're going to put up to two Dehounds into... Let's place it here. We're going to take a Dehound from here and from here to get third Dehound here in the middle. Okay. We will just let them do the damage in the jungle, unfortunately. Not much I can do there. All right. All right. Now the first one is a little bit weird, but from now on it's going to be the way this works. They're going to be doing the exploring. Then we can do our fast powers. Then they'll do both building and ravaging, and then we can do our slow powers. Okay, just just to clarify. Now at this point we can pick options. We can either add more presents, which will allow us to play more cards. However, we don't have any more options here, so this is not going to be that useful. Alternatively, we can reclaim cards, which will allow us to replay the cards we already have. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to gain a power card and add two more presents. It's going to give me a new card, Uncanny Melting. If invaders are present, we get one fear. And if target is sandland or wetlands, we can remove one blight. So I'd love to play that over here, ideally. I'm going to place some more presents, one in the Sandlands, and that's it. We can still only play two cards, but we've got three energy. So we're going to be playing both the Uncanny Meeting and the Wash Away. And that is it. This is going to give us again the massive flooding. Did we change that to gain anything better? If we were to get rid of the Wash Away and play the Boon of Wigger. 
This would give me... No, only the first level of Massive Flooding. If we had more cards, we could get the second level Massive Flooding, which gives us two damage, which is really, really good. But we can't do it right now, so we just do the wash away here. We don't have any fast powers, so unfortunately they will ravage this jungle. Not gonna do much over here in this jungle, though, which is good. So they'll attack us for one, but we will kill them back. Here they're gonna give us one Blight, which is not ideal. So you notice here that we lose some of the HP. Now next turn they will try to... Oh, they're also going to be building, yeah. Now they'll ex do exploring, so they're going to move into the wetlands and now we can go. We didn't have any fast power, so we couldn't do much to stop them there. Okay. Next turn they will ravage the sandlands and build in the wetlands. So what I'm going to be doing is a couple things. First of all, I am going to be removing the Blight here so we gain extra HP. Then I'm going to be pushing a town. Oh, but we could only push the town into the jungle. It's going to be really difficult. Well, we'll push the town in the jungle. And now we can push up to three, so we're gonna try to push... Actually, I'm just going to be pushing... Okay. So, this thing is fine, we're gonna just kill the explorer. This, I don't think this will allow me to push the city. It, it does say three, so the city does have three HP, but it's not enough, so we're just gonna be pushing... I think this guy away into the mountains, to make sure they're not gonna build anything here. Okay. Now, this time we're going to go with the Reclaim card, so we can play more cards. And we will also gain a Power card and gain energy. So we get Nature's Wisdom Defense 6. This is really, really good. Because what this allows us to do is do really high protection. This, for example, would be quite useful if they were to ravage the wetlands. And we actually might want to set up for that. We might want to move some of these towns into the wetlands. Because this will allow us to do the defense and then kill them. So we're going to leave the Nature's Resilience for next turn when they're going to be ravaging the the wetlands. So we're going to do Uncanny Meeting. Now we're going to do the Wash Away. We're going to be pushing two towns and then explore into the wetlands. And we could also do Rivers Bounty. Or oh, actually... You might want to put the defense here because they're going to be building here. So then the, we don't really need the wash away because we're going to leave the jungle alone. So let's try. We can only play two cards. Could we play any two cards that would give us enough for this? You would need two yellow and three blue. We can't get that. Not with two cards. We can only play two cards. Okay, well in that case, what do we want to do? So we're going to let them build here in the wetlands. We're fine with that because we're going to be able to destroy that with the Nature's Resilience next turn. Okay. So, we might want to use something like Flash, flash Floods to, to kill... We don't need to kill this guy though. So we're just going to use River's Bounty to gain more the hands. That's always good. And maybe we could use Uncanny Meeting to remove some Blight. We can't really use that. We could only gain Fear. Which is also pretty useful. But we might want to actually spread some of these from the jungle. Just to make it a bit easier for us. So we'll do that. So we'll finish playing cards. Cannot play anything fast. That's fine. So we'll let them build and Ravage. They will ravage the sands, which is fine, because we're going to destroy them here. Nothing's going to happen to us, because the explorers only have one HP. They're dead. Now they will build in the wetlands, so they will only build here, but we're ready for that for next turn. You did think quite ahead here in this game, but that's okay. Now they will explore. What are they exploring? The sandlands again. That's actually not too bad. Okay. Now. Next time they'll ravage the wetlands, we need to be ready for that. But first, let's get up to... We're gonna push up to three people away and one person. So we're gonna push 
the explorer from the sandland into the wetland. And then we're going to push. Well, do we want to do that? We could undo it. Well, let's, let's undo it first. Okay, so it undid the massive falling us. No, okay, we're fine. Okay. We could push up to three explorers away now. This is going to do two damage, plus one, plus three. So first thing we gotta do is we gotta move more the hounds here. Wait, into this land. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. We can't move anything in there. Okay. So we're gonna get six defense and one the hounds. So we're only gonna be able to do two damage back. Well, that's not ideal. We need to be able to do more damage here. So we're actually going to have to push some of these away, I think. I didn't realize I can't move to the hound there. That's really irritating. We use Flesh Flood next turn. Well, we might be able to use the Flesh Flood and the Niches Resilience next turn to handle that. So we'll leave that alone. Alright, let's... Um, worry about the jungle here. You know what, let's, let's just... Um, Push this guy into the wetlands as well. Make sure they can't build anything new. And then we'll use the river's bounty. Oh, I'm really upset that I can't play there. Let's use the river's bounty here and gain the two the hand from there. Gain a third one. We'll finish. Okay. Now we need to start with something useful. So we need to grab more presents. We're gonna place a presence here because we'll be protected. And one more presence here in the mountains. Actually... Yeah. Now we're gonna take the flash flood and the nature's resilience. And we can't get any more cards, but that's okay. We'll finish playing that. Alright, now we're gonna do the Nature's Resilience, which is gonna give us the 6 defense. And we will also do 1 damage to a city. And then with the, with the Dahan, we'll be able to do extra 2 damage to a city. So we'll kill the Explorer and hit the city once. And then our Dahans will do two more, 2 more damage to the city, which will allow us to destroy the city. Because the town is not that bad, but the city is pretty problematic. So city is dead. And now we gain two fear. Once we gain to four fear, we will be able to play a fear card, which is very... Oh, I forgot that if I put two explorers, they'd actually be able to do give me a blight. Oh, that was a mistake on my part. But that's, that's okay. Exploring... Oh, the jungle. That's really, really bad. No, not there. Now we're going to need another nature's resilience for next turn. And move them away a lot if we can. Oh, that's gonna be interesting. Okay. Now. We're gonna need to reclaim our cards because we need that nature's resilience again. Pull beneath the air. If target land has your power, we'll gain one fear and one damage. If target land is wetland or sandlands, we'll gain one damage. Alright. Now they want to ravage the sandlands. They've got nobody on the sandlands, so we don't really care. Nature's was interesting. You'll need to move some people away from the jungle. Target is your presence, one fear and one damage. If target is set lands and one lands plus one damage. Okay. I'm gonna need to use the river's bounty to move some people into the jungle so that we are ready next time. We're also gonna need to move a lot of people away from the jungle, otherwise we'll die. So we're gonna start this off by letting them build. We can't do anything about it. So they'll just build, whatever. So they'll build a, a town here and a, and a city here. The city there. Okay. They're going to be exploring the coastal lands, okay? So these are all three of these. It's not too bad for us. Alright.
All right, now we're going to be pushing some of their stuff away. So we will push a town into the Sandlands and another town into the mountains and an explorer into the Sandlands again. Then we're going to use the massive flooding also. Because we need to move. Oh no, I can't do that there. Come on. Keep forgetting that I can't use it if I don't have a presence there. They'll ravage the jungle. So let's get more Duhans here so we can kill them. Be able to kill all of these here once they ravage. So this is because this is a total damage of seven but with the flash floats we will be able to kill the explorer and still defend ourselves the problem is if they give you additional blight to some place where you already have a blight you will uh, take a lot of damage so you don't want to do it we're gonna move this explorer here to make sure they can build there all right so now we need to use presence We'll place a presence there and a presence here. We'll use Nature's Resilience Flash Floods. And we can use one more thing. So then we're going to use the Uncanny Meeting. Actually, we just use the Pool Beneath the Hungry Earth, which gives us just the basic this, though. Yeah, we need the Nature's Resilience, which doesn't give us any good element. If I were to play... Yeah, we need to play things like this. We're just gonna finish playing the cards. Okay. And we'll start with our stuff. So we'll start with the Flesh Floods. To do damage to this Explorer. So now they're gonna only do 6 damage. Then we're gonna give ourselves 6 defense. Defend for 6. Now they'll ravage, here they'll give us blight, that's fine, but we'll kill them back with our two hounds, I think. Yeah, we're gonna do six damage back, which should kill them all. Perfect. Which gave us extra fear. Here, oh, we can't hit them back because we've got no two hounds, but at least they didn't hurt us. Because they couldn't move them there because of the river's bounty. Oh, well. Okay. No wetlands, come on. Start exploring mountains or something where you've got nobody. And not these terrible things that we don't want. Now we, we are however going to play the pool beneath the earth to gain some nice... Uh... So we could play it here and do one damage to the explorer. Actually, if we play it here, we could gain two damage and destroy a city. We gain fear. We have two damage, so we'll destroy a city. And what's, uh, sorry, a town. And now, upon the next turn, uh, upon the next iteration, we'll be able to play our fear card, which allows us to move some of them away. And they want to ravage the coastal lands. So we will move one of these explorers there. He can ravage it, but he won't be able to, to destroy anything. Okay. Now we're gonna need to reclaim our cards and gain extra energy. Ooh, two fear, four damage. That's really, really cool. But okay, okay, so we, this is something that we're very unique. Because you got a really cool power card, you need to destroy some other cards. We're gonna destroy Boon of Vigor. And now we could play two fear, four damage. Fortunately, we can only place that after they ravage, but it's still four damage is super high. If we have three yellow, yeah, we won't have that. They will ravage the coastal land, so they will give me blight here, nothing there, and then they'll build in the wetlands, which is pretty terrible. So we could use we could use the nature's resilience to protect ourselves against the blight here. Pull beneath the earth. And then we'll use the nature's resilience, I think. And then we'll... No, the pull beneath the earth. Uh, no, I don't want that. I want something that allows me, like, the uncanny melting, which allows me to remove blight, but only in sand and wetlands. But we do have a blight in a wetland, so we'll do it here. I'll finish playing cards. We'll play the nature's resilience just because we can. I do want to make sure that they're not going to hurt me here too much. 
All right, now we can play the flip card. This allows us to remove one explorer from a land where it is the only invader. So only from these two. That's actually kind of... Actually, we could push this explorer here into the coastal lands because he's only going to be able to do... Oh, it killed him? I thought it was just supposed to uh, move him. Okay, well, that went better than expected. All right, now we're going to assign two damage to the city. No, our Duhan is the one doing the damage. Okay. We'll be able to play the uncanny meeting for four damage, so this will allow us to destroy the city. And we've got no other damage, right? Actually, we could then use the uncanny meeting to finish off the city, so let's try that. They'll build in the wetlands, so they'll build something extra there, like a town. But with the uncanny meeting, we should be able, or maybe even with Exalted Road, we could do four damage, so destroy the city and the town and everything else. The invaders have flipped a stage three invader card. These cards have two land types, so they explore in both of them. Watch out if the invader decks runs out and they can flip a card, you lose. Yep, we know. Alright. Now we could do four damage now here. They don't heal, right? We, we can use our card first. Yes, we can get. So four damage will allow us to finish the, everybody here in the wetlands. Wait. This does... This will allow us to remove a blight here, first of all. We'll do that. And now we can use the accelerated rod. Yes, let's finish off... Oh, it automatically finishes off these things. Okay, they're all dead. Which means we gain additional card. If we could gain just one more fear, we would change the victory condition so you'd only need to destroy all their cities and towns and we wouldn't have to worry about their explorers. So that's actually quite powerful. They will ravage the wetlands. Which is not great because we can't really defend against that too much. And they will build both in the jungle, which is kind of terrible for us, and in the sandlands. We could push this guy away, make sure they don't build anything here. Or we could push the town away here to make sure that they... Maybe let's do it. Let's push the town into the jungle to make sure they don't build anything here they didn't build a city here because like i said cities are difficult to destroy okay so we're way over time so we're just gonna end the episode here i hope you enjoyed it if you did write down in the comments and you can click on the right to watch some other digital board games i'll see you there bye bye